There was a 99.2% chance LA would take the L when they were trailing 78 to 53 at halftime. The Dame time watch was broken in this one though, as while Dame dropped 24 points, he shot just 5 for 17. Patrick Beverly would hold him to 2 for 7 shooting from the field and 1 for 6 shooting from distance. LA outscored Portland by 27 with Bev on the court. When you're down 25 at half, locking up a top 2 to 5 point guard of this generation and maybe the clutchest player of this generation also in Dame, in order to surmount such an overwhelming deficit was a bewildering feat. Pat Bev made life a living hell for Dame, which we're going to break down film on. In addition to Bev, the Lakers' mind-boggling comeback was fueled by on-a-string defensive rotations. After Schroeder went five straight games scoring in single figures, Dennis's second consecutive 19-plus point performance, Thomas Bryant's career night, and near 40-year-old LeBron James posting a 37-point double-double were also factors in the Lake Show's W. Now sitting just five games out of third place in the West, two and a half games back of the number 5 seed and just a game back of the play-in, the Lakers are sneaking up on us. Before continuing, we're really close to 100k, so if even a quarter of you watching were subscribed, we could reach that goal before the 2023 playoffs in April. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. I'm going to plug my Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. I post mixtapes on Instagram and update you on the most crucial info on Twitter. So trust me, go stay 100% updated on the happenings of the NBA and my channel by following those two accounts, again at dflowhoops. The Lakers versus Blazers on Sunday was maybe the weirdest game of the NBA season. LA went up 18-4 in the opening quarter, only to eventually go down by nearly 30 entering the final 24 minutes, then somehow someway scratched and clawed their way back from that deficit, which pretty much says it all. But there's a reason why teams with Patrick Beverly on them have never missed the playoffs throughout his 11-year NBA career. Pat Bev's actually a 14-year pro, having played three years in Greece and Russia before entering the association in 2012 but it's the old-school 90s-esque grittiness, quick lateral movement, and low center of gravity from all three levels defensively, which makes Beverly such a nightmare to maneuver around on or off the ball, let alone get buckets on. Despite not even averaging 9 points per game throughout his career, this man's a force in his own right. Sometimes a player's true impact doesn't show up on the stat sheet, as the all-time trash talk, peskiness, and general get-under-your-skin type on-ball clamps gives Beverly a one-of-a-kind type impact. With the insane amount of 40-plus point games this month, Beverly stated on the record recently that it's easy to score in the NBA given the lack of defense there is. That's a really odd statement from a player averaging 5.9 points per night this year, but maybe Bev's right and guys aren't committing enough energy to stop in their man given defense isn't flashy. Beverly worked on shifting that narrative Sunday with probably the best defensive performance of the season with all due respect to OG Ananobi of my Raptors, who's had a few monster defensive showings of his own. Other than the film, which is next, let's look at the context for why this was such an insane performance from Bev, then we'll touch on Braun, Bryant, Schroeder, etc. We all know Dame's a first-class individual in terms of how he carries himself off the court, but the Oakland-born assassin, you can bet, meant every one of the choice words he threatened Bev with. You have to respect the passion and, if you will, the wanting all the smokeness from Dame, but right after Lillard had those words for Bev, that was the moment the Lakers turned it around. More specifically, it was the moment Bev turned up the force on Dame. We're going to break down his defense from start to finish though, as in the opening quarter, where Bev's maybe sagging off a tad bit, Dame clanks a 30-foot bomb he'd usually knock down. Even with Nurkic setting the untypical off-ball screen off the inbound, you can see Beverly fight around the screen at the last second, just enough to force Josh Hart to give it to Simons instead of Dame. Getting the rock out of Dame's hands and guarding him off the ball, of course, makes him less of a threat and therefore easier to shut down. As Beverly's top-locking pressure allows him to fluidly get around this Jeremy Grant UCLA screen, then he simply out-hustles Dame to his spot as Josh Hart's lazy pin-down isn't gonna cut it, and Grant misses the corner jumper. Denying Dame of the ball with that elite stamina from Bev is just as good as forcing a miss. A picture-perfect example for young guards of how to navigate a ball screen comes on this play as Bev stays right with Dame as he approaches this pick, but trails him as Dame goes around it, who gives it up and doesn't get it back.
When defending on an island, having his top foot attacked like he is right here, he's able to stay with one of the shiftiest shot creators in the game by first using a stance to guard the drive, then jumping into an angled stance to cut off the three right after that, before funneling Dame into the backside help of Thomas Bryant. That shows you Beverly's ISO clamps. However, while that goes down, Eubanks catches Brown Jr. ball watching. Dame lays the nice dime to him, but Bev stays in the play, rotating back to Eubanks for the clean strip. Most of, if not every other player in the league would have saved their energy after that first stoppage of Lillard, but that stick to it and IQ in terms of his help defense is something Pat's made a living off for over a decade now. Instinctively sound positioning on the sprint back to draw the charge on Simons right here. This next play shows you every weapon in Bev's defensive bag, the aforementioned off-ball positioning, the screen navigation to duck around another pin down from Nurkic, but it also displays his fundamental forearm-to-body clamps in one-on-ones, his fast feet to completely stay in front of Dame on the drive, not to mention his sneakily quick hands to snatch some late-night cookies for himself. After this next bit of top-locking pressure, Dame's looking to the ref, Portland doesn't seem insistent on getting the ball back to their top guy, as was the case for a lot of these sequences. Just as Dame finally does a better job at getting around Bev's off-ball attention to detail, credit to Dennis for lurking in the passing lanes and getting the rare pass interception on the man he's guarding. Lazy one-handed entry from Simons, to be fair. Another perfect trail of Dame to navigate this slip screen from Eubanks leads to another defensive funneling into the rim protection of Bryant. Even though he's barely six feet tall, Bev's physically gifted strength and speed makes his low center of gravity tough to gauge for attackers. On those Beverly trails in the pick and roll, that bulldog stature and mentality makes it tough for Lillard to effectively pick his spots. After Portland swings it around and Canadian rookie Shaden Sharp bricks it, Bev then leaks out for the lay-in off a savvy LeBron outlet. Having timed Dame's release at this point in the game, Beverly fakes as if Eubanks makes an impact with this screen before leveraging off Eubanks to spring right underneath Dame for the 99% contested jumper. Guarding Dame full court and well aware that he can top lock him, then funnel the pressure inwards after the defense collapses, Bev lets LeBron and Troy handle Dame at the rim, but Pat knows his job is far from done. This man's always one step ahead defensively. He swiftly rotates right out to Grant, then picks up Josh Hart in the corner. Great help from Bryant and James on the back side, and a perfect closeout from the lengthy TBJ. LeBron James is now just 224 points away from passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the all-time score record. One of, if not the greatest player ever to step on a basketball court, is ready to cap off his legacy with style points. But there's one other thing LeBron needs in addition to that record. He needs to win the championship this year, and then he needs to get one more, potentially with Bronny, to even Michael Jordan as a six-ring king. For now, let's just respect LeBron for having enough longevity to pass a record that, back in high school, I thought no one would even come close to breaking, given how far Abdul-Jabbar was ahead of any other player. At that time, LeBron probably had around 25,000 points at age 33 or something like that. I never thought he'd go on to play this long at this high of a level for so long. It's something we're never going to see again in all likelihood, so it's worth stepping back to appreciate whether you're a LeBron stan or not. Last but not least though, how can we forget about Thomas Railroad Bryant, who exploded for a monster career-high 31 points, which shockingly included stretching it out for four triples. More importantly, Bryant snagged a couple game-changing offensive boards, which turned into putbacks when LA needed it most. Bryant was even looking like his first name was Kobe when he drained the go-ahead three-pointer to make LA's comeback official down the stretch. Underrated is an overused term, but it's something I've always called Bryant, as we'll have to further evaluate his impact in a future Laker video. Nevertheless, in your opinion, what was most insane about LA's comeback? Competing Community Speaks with your take. Number one through five ranked shoutout commenters get a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Shout out to Skull Crusher who says Shannon Sharp could coach the Grizzlies and make them better. Thanks for every answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.